the service of the Federation, Mrs. Uh, Winifred Oyo Ita MLI, Permanent Secretary Siaga, former Permanent Secretaries and Resource Persons, Representative of DV, the Acting DG of Peru for Public Service Reform, Chairman and Board Members of Agencies and Parastatals of Government, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, Members of the Press. It gives me great pleasure to be here with you this evening at this very important induction program for governing boards of federal parastatals under the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. You have very impressive turnout. It's an indication of the importance you have attached to this program and your disposition to be better equipped for the responsibilities ahead of you as chairman and members of the governing boards of the respective organizations that you represent here today. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this program, as you may recall, is in keeping with my address to you at your inauguration on the 27th of February, 2018, to the effect that a joint retreat for management, chairmen and members of the governing boards of federal processes under the presidency and other MDAs would be organized to further deepen your understanding of the new policies, processes, and procedures that have been introduced in the Act of Governance. This induction program, which is the first phase, becomes more important and significant at this time that the present administration is fully committed to the entrenchment of good and purposeful governance in our country. As you are all aware, the public service that we all know remains the major service provider and development machinery in Nigeria. It is the operating arm of government with the responsibility for the implementing policies, projects, and programs that guarantee the efficient delivery of good governance and democratic dividends to our people. It is, however, hierarchical in structure, driving its direction from the foremost decision-making body in the Federation, and that is the Federal Executive Council. It is this assignment of responsibility of specific tasks that involve the creation of parastatals and other agencies of government. Parastatals are government establishments created by statute to deliver specific mandate. The structure and operating instruments are derived from their respective acts of establishment. Depending on exigencies, parastatals are placed under the supervision of the presidency or a ministry. The affairs of parastatals are pretended by a governing board headed by a chairman to provide policy guidelines and liaise with the supervisory ministry through the permanent secretary for effective monitoring policy directives, I mean policy guidance, budget processing, and ensuring that the government policies, directives relating to the functions of the parastatals are carried out effectively. However, the day-to-day -day administration of the parastatals <coughs> is handled by a chief executive who doubles as the accounting officer. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I have observed in recent past with concern divergent interpretations to the roles of the governing boards of federal parasitals, I mean of the role federal uh, governing boards of federal parasitals are expected to play in the corporate governance of their organizations. Arising from this, a number of worrisome issues 
have begun to emerge. Some of these issues include disagreements on who is responsible for the day-to-day -day running of parasitals and agencies. Disregard for extant regulations guiding and restricting the conduct of board meetings. Interferences in the function of office of the chief executive. Issuing directives to staff without recourse to the chief executive officer, thereby creating disharmony amongst personnel. E. Initiating unlawful disciplinary procedures or measures against chief executive without requisite guidance and approval from the supervisory ministry and F, instigating the labor unions and associations as agents of destruction in the parasites. They observe poor and unhealthy relationships existing between governing boards and chief executives of some organizations has become very worrisome to government and is totally unacceptable. Chairmen and members of the governing boards should acquaint themselves with the instruments of the establishment of their respective organizations, where the roles and responsibilities of the board are prescribed. Equally, the following referral authorities and other relevant government circulars are to guide the conduct of public officers. One, public service rules. Two, financial regulations. Three, guide to administrative procedures in the public service. Four, the Public Procurement Act 2007. And five, the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2007, and et cetera, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me at this juncture highlight the roles and responsibilities of boards of parastatus as provided by some of the earlier mentioned referral authorities. One, statutory boards, stroke councils, should set operational and administrative policies in accordance with government policy directives and shall supervise the implementation of such policies. It is the responsibility of the board to set these policies and to ensure complete and total implementation of such policies. Two, a board shall not be involved directly or otherwise in the day-to-day -day management of a parastatal or an agency. Three, a minister exercises control of parastatal at policy level through the board of the parastatal only. The responsibilities of ministers are to ensure and exercise control over the parastatal only at the policy level, and it has to be through the boards of the parastatals only. The board must only operate on part-time basis in accordance with extant rules that forbid allocation of official quarters to members on a permanent basis, use of official, official vehicles by members on a permanent basis, and payment of Esther court allowances for only overseas travels approved by the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation at their supervising ministry. And lastly, on the other hand, the core functions of the Chief Executive Officer include the day-to-day -day administration of the organization, <coughs> as well as providing strategic leadership for the management of the organization. The board shall, in addition, perform the following oversight responsibilities. Ensure that the federal government of Nigeria's long-term interest is served. Two, work with the management to determine the organization's mission and long-term strategy. Three, promote sustainable and cost-efficient activities of the organization. So CEOs, don't tell your board that they have no business <coughs> looking at how you spend your money. They have business looking at how monies are spent. Because it is their responsibility 
to promote sustainable and cost-efficient activities of the organization. Fourth, establish and promote the objectives, business, and integrity of the organization. Five, establish internal control over financial reporting and assess the organizational risk and strategies for risk by mitigation. Six, monitor the performance of management in achieving set objectives of the organization. And seven, request appropriate reports from management. Your boards have responsibility to demand for specific and, 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 and specific reports whenever they have need of those reports from the management of the organization. In conclusion, governing boards and chief executive officers of federal parasitos and others who run them must remain worthy of the trust reposed in them by their respective appointments. First, there must be a sustained and committed leadership that embodies the core values of good governance. I therefore enjoin you to all be worthy of your calling and strive to entrench good governance in your organizations. I am assured that you will take this induction program very seriously and leverage on the gains as I, have, I, can, I can affirm to the unflinching support of His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari in the discharge of your duties. I have directed that this program should be fully participatory and as such, any of you could be invited to chair or lead a session without prior notice. It is therefore necessary that you all remain to the end of the event as government and our partners, the DP, would not hesitate to enforce sanctions on anyone found to have left this program earlier than necessary. On this note, Chairman, distinguished members of the board, and you are CEOs. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to formally declare open this induction program for governing boards of federal parastatals, agencies, and commissions under the presidency open. Thank you for your kind attention, and I wish you a very successful day.